call the uh, public hearing uh, for the traffic ordinance to order at 7 o'clock. We have Flo Smith, Brad Town, Justin Lawrence, John Quinn here from the select board. Um, any additions or changes to the agenda? There's one addition when we get to the select board meeting but yep. for the public hearing. All right. Public comment. Um, I'd like to take a minute where our local our rep for the town of Berlin and Northfields here, and I think you want to say a couple of things. So if you want to talk, and I don't know if now's a good time or if you want to wait until uh, everybody's done. Or. Yeah, it's just nice to be here. I'll talk afterwards here. I'll hear what's going on. It's just nice to be back around seeing people and uh, meeting in person and, and uh, hearing what's, what's going on through this in Northfield and Berlin. And, a lot of catching up to do, and it's just nice to see people's faces again in person. Absolutely. Thank you for coming. Yes, thank you. Thank you. So, we'll open it up for public comment, I assume. I have a question. I don't know if this is the right time or not. I think you're talking about um, the speed limit on Richardson yep. at 705. But I wondered if we could also add to that to put in a no outlet sign on that road. I don't know if it makes sense to do it now or at the time when you doing that road. I, I can speak to that, Justin, if you yeah, like. Go ahead. I've been checking the roads and the signs as well. And I will be coming out with a list of recommendations for street signs, and that is one of them, that okay. it's a dead end street. Can um, we get in on that as well? What street? Coas Trail. Yes. Coas oh, yeah. Trail is Absolutely. on the list also mm -hmm. uh, for that. Mm -hmm. So I believe I've talked to you maybe a couple you of did, times. You did, and I yeah. met you on TV. Oh, boy. <laughs> Perfect. So, yeah, so that that is that is covered, and it will be. Um, there'll be an update on that on what the recommendations are for that, based on the five rounds I did and the input that has. Okay. On some yeah. signage updates. I think there's a lot of roads like that in town that definitely need some signage. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, right. look at the corner up on Cross Town Road. We spend a lot of time up there um, with, with our police department and our fire. I department. believe in our in ours they have a they've missed. The sign, and they want the medical center that's just up from us. Oh. So they come in our yard and turn around. Yep. We average three a day. Yep. Uh, any other public comment on this? The speed limit changes. The you know Brookfield Road. We did a traffic study on reducing the speed limit. Just a matter of procedure. Don't we need to actually go into the public hearing and then close out of the public hearing? I thought we were, I thought we were just doing public comment at the beginning of the meeting. I just wanted to make sure we were oh. procedurally doing it. Okay. Well, I, I thought I opened the public hearing. Okay. And then I opened it up for public comment. Oh, okay. And then I was going to do public comment again before the select board meeting. Oh, okay. So is that the right procedure? Sure. Your opinion? Huh? It's your meeting. Is anybody opposed to that? Okay. Any other <laughs> comments on this, John? No. I don't have any either. Anybody else from the public? I don't have any Would you like me just to give a quick summary of what, of what okay. some of the changes were okay. highlighted for everyone? So basically, you know, the, the, the review and the recommendations, recommendations coming from an, an actual uh, state okay approved process for doing an engineering study on Brookfield Road specifically as well for the speed limit changes. Um, but we're looking at a reduction of speed limit to 25 miles per hour for Brookfield Road, Mirror Lake Road, Richardson Road, and Coas Trail. Those are the four uh, for this revision that we're looking at. Um, in addition to that, just to give you some, some numbers, uh, in 2020 the state did a road count, a car count survey on those roads. Uh, for traffic, for average daily traffic on Brookfield Road, believe it or not, in 2020 was 310 vehicles on Brookfield Road. Mirror Lake Road was 76. Um, there was no state count done on Richardson Road, and Coas Trail was two, average two per day in 2020. So, then in addition to that, we're talking about some parking as well on Payne Turnpike on the west side of the road that would start at the southern end of the guardrails just past the turn to Brookfield Road. There's a set of wooden guardrails there. At the end of those guardrails is where this parking would start 
and it would extend south about 800 feet. So that would, if, if we did a little bit larger than normal, I think 20 feet is the normal for parallel parking along the side of a roadway. If we did 25 foot spots there, that would yield us 32 parking spots in that location on Payne Turnpike. And that would be off the road by widening the road in our right of way and it has been reviewed with the city of Montpelier as well. They understand it's in our right of way. They don't really have any issue with it at all uh, for that portion of it. Then there was the discussion point about on that little section next to the boat launch on Brookfield Road, potentially eliminating that with the addition of those 32 spots um, to just to, to clean that area up. Uh, and then no parking, no, let me rephrase that maybe, no town authorized parking on Mirror Lake Road. There is a small area there, but the town really can't say that that's a parking area because it's really located on private property. Um, so that's uh, that's kind of a summary of what we're looking at and, and where we are with this. So I thought, I thought a couple of meetings ago we talked about leaving that as parking um, in the area of the Bolt Launch area. For now. Yep. Yeah, it was just so, opened up that it was looked at. So there was discussion of it. I don't think a decision, I don't have anything that showed a decision was ever made, yay or nay, to it. No, no, I don't think so either. I just, so are you saying that, okay, so you're not, you're not recommending that it be closed. You're just saying that it's up for discussion. It's up for discussion. That's it. Questions for me on that summary? I know that the uh, the potential closing of that parking was kind of brought up. Was that brought up by Montville here? You said uh, it came up in the discussion. What were we going to keep it? What were we going to do with it? And I just said it's it's on the table for discussion. That's it. Yeah, when we reviewed it on site. I think in the end, with a lot of this, with a lot of the uh, the different things that we have going on, we'll end up with much more parking around Brown Pond than we currently have. Um, 32 new spots, we'll definitely do that. Well, and then we also have the spot on Irish Hill that we're working with Montpelier to get, you know, where the barricades are up above that. For the snow machine parking? Yeah, for everybody. But right. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, so that'll actually free up a lot of that area, I think. So Mirror Lake Road would still be open for parking, though. Well, the, again, we're as far as on Mirror Lake Road itself, we're, we're saying no parking. There is a small area there that's who's saying no parking. Probably. Well, that was the recommendation when I when I reviewed it with Tim from you know the winter issues that he's been having and even the grading issues. Uh, it's it's a tough call. I mean, either way, but you know. But yeah, I mean. As someone who lives in the area, a lot of people launch their boats over there because it's a long way across. The other, yeah. the other concern I had heard was that um, there's concern. ice fishing. Yeah, exactly. So the, the flow of water over on the other side is, mm -hmm. is the current. It doesn't freeze well. Right. So they have to access it from over there. Over so there. if there was absolutely no parking there, that was another concern. So yeah. you know, I do know that we have concerns with being able to get through with our plows. There's times when Tim's had to actually go back around. Yep. Oh, really? Yeah, yep. to clear the road because it was blocked and we couldn't make yep. it through in the winter time. There's a guy out there fishing in the morning. Typically, they park right at the culvert because that's not on Montpelier property. They park there. They offload and, and uh, haul their stuff out and do the fishing. And if there's somebody parked on the culvert, he can't get through the plow one way or the other, whichever side they're on. Mm -hmm. so they park on. There's definitely some concerns we need to address. I know last year there was at least one occasion where they were parked on both sides of the culvert and he had to go all the way back around because he couldn't get through. Yep. Right, but the police should have taken care of that, I mean, at some some level. Well, it's difficult if it's something that they can't really enforce because it yeah. isn't, it's not, this isn't deemed yeah. no parking yet and this isn't deemed a parking yet, so it's kind of... Right. So maybe one side of the road, no parking, would, good, would be a solution to... Yep. There's definitely enough whip there. You know, no sure parking on the culvert, obviously, on either side, probably. 
width, isn't it? No, it's still the same width, isn't it? No parking on the side. That would be a good. Um, anything else? Vince, do you think that's going to be one of your recommendations for signage um, with, the, with the road signage, something like that? Or? Yeah, we're looking at, again, okay. whatever the decision is, we're looking at the no parking signs and maybe some other verbiage on the signs for, for exactly this type of thing. Right. Yeah. We have to put <coughs> the signage on, for sure. Thank you, Joe. But I have another question. Sorry, I came in late. Um, for the fines that I see for no parking, um, and I, I see you have like handicap and the fire hydrants set at $100, and you have a fire lane set at 25 Is that not as important? Well, it's a great question. Again, the only thing that was changed are what's highlighted in this. Those those fines yeah. were pre-existing. There was sure. no changes um, recommended at the time we went to revision on this um, for those fines. It's, it's an open discussion, I guess, Justin, and we can it's a good it. question. Right. I don't Vince, have an answer for it. Any of these fines, is that on private property or is that just for public property? Well, it's, it's, it's a mixture of both, right? If you're blocking a private driveway, there's a fine associated with that. I was thinking of the fire lane, like at uh, Price Chopper or uh, at uh, Shaw's. That's on private property. Yep. But it's still a. a Ticketable offense, right? Is it? I, I believe so. I, I can double check. I can right, double check. That's not. That's, yeah, that's true. <laughs> I mean, if, if it was, if it was a uh, fire lane out in front of the, uh, I can, of the, uh, I can the town clerk's that office. The statute, yeah. Take a look at that. Get the right answer. I just don't want us ticketing somebody and not have a chance of right, having it come through. And then I can, I will. Uh, Based on the findings of that, I'll revise the statute to uh, re the ordinance to reflect what the statute says, whether it's private or or not. Thanks, Vince. Go ahead, Joe. So I, I have a question that, that might be the same lines as yours: of the fire lane being at Shaw's and Price Chopper, is it private? They also have a handicap parking down there, sure. so it would kind of go hand in hand. Yep. You're going to treat them both the same? Oh, I mean, uh, it depends on what the statute says. If, if we can't take a ticket on private property. Yeah. Either way, Joe, as uh, president of the fire corporation, do the same fire department would like to have some input on this? Mm -hmm. um, yes. Okay. Perfect. Um, we also, we got an email from a resident saying that they just wanted to voice their disapproval of banning parking on Mirror Lake Road. Um, that they always park at the turnout. Um, Who is it? Uh, Louie and Laura Plew. So feel free to contact them with any questions, but everybody can have a copy of that. So. Sorry, can I ask a question? Are you, are you saying that you don't want any? Parking on Mirror Lake, even that little pull off that is, well, there's like four parking spots down there that so keeps people off the main road. The issue that we've had on Mirror Lake is some, sometimes in the winter, people park on both sides. Um, it's blocked, can't get through with, with the plow truck. Um, I think that there's, there's a lot of use that goes on down there. John brought that up as well as one of his concerns. Um, so the reason that we're talking about it is maybe looking at one side of the road 
having no parking and that will ensure that like fire trucks can get through there, emergency services, our plow trucks. Um, the issue that we run into with a lot of that property is that it's either out of the town right of way or private property. I thought that's why you built that little parking spot off the side of the road was to keep people out of the road. It is, but it doesn't, I mean, there's that, that parking spot is, I mean, it's good for four cars at best if everybody right. parks appropriately. But you're not thinking of getting rid of that, are you? That wasn't part of that. I mean, well, it, again, it's, it's just the same. The issue with that is that property is for sale, and it's not town property. Um, so we can't say that it is parking. We can't say that it isn't parking, really. Right. It's convenient right now, mm -hmm. uh, but at some point in time, uh, it's probably going to go away, depending on you know the sale of the property. Right, so it's uh, beyond our control um, in many ways. But what we can do is look at saying, okay, well, we can designate one side of the road as parking um, and just try to make it more orderly, if that makes sense. Um, any other questions, concerns, comments? I'm good with closing the public hearing, you guys. make a motion to close the public hearing if there's no further comment second any uh any comment no all those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. motion carries so we're closed with the public hearing we'll start our regular select board meeting uh, Where do we have additions or changes to this agenda? Uh, I have one addition, and that's uh, in your package as well. It's a document for the uh, uh, Fish and Road Scoping here. Project that was approved um, for signature. All right. Any public comment on the regular agenda? Discussions on adopting building codes and enforcement with Planning Commission. So, uh, Dave had done a lot of this, so it would have been great if he had been on here, um, especially with the development we have in town going on. Uh, I've realized, and I'm, I'm sure you guys do as well, that we don't have any building ordinances, I mean, other than that there's the state, that is obviously for the commercial, things like that. Um, but, so, these got like the fire department's not overly involved in the process. Um, it's got to be hard though, being a volunteer fire department to to do inspections on a this type of thing. Right. So it would be kind of like the the dog catchers where you could appoint them and allow them to do it. Um, you know, some of the other municipalities do, like Barry City. You know, they do inspections. We're about to have 500 or so apartments in the town of Berlin. Um, and there's definitely going to be things where there's smoke detectors and you know there's public safety things over the years um, and I know that like all of my apartments I have to pay an annual fee for registration and then they get inspected and then if there's updates or changes that need to occur over time the uh, public safety will go in there and, and, and give me advice on it. I don't know it was something David brought it up uh, he wanted to talk about it but unfortunately He's not here at the moment. Um, is there anything you, you you had some thoughts on that, Joe? Um, I have been talking with Joe Allsworth. He was at a meeting that I think a few of us were at yep. and discussing it. Um, I think it's a program which um, the town of Berlin um, I think could, could really um, I think. Uh, they would do well with it, with everything that's there. We have no control over anything. With all the, uh, the development that's going on, uh, the state is always shorthanded. You know, they, they're reactionary, you know, with everything. Um, and just, uh, I think this is something that I think that the, the board should really discuss and decide what they want from the fire department or somebody in this role. So to your point, being a volunteer fire department, that's something that they, they have a survey that's coming to us and the results of that survey 
um, driven the town uh, as far as what they had for, you know, what they perceived the Berlin Volunteer Fire Department as. One of the, and we're, we're waiting on some of that data. And we should, when should we have It's just that? putting the presentation together, just cleaning right. it up. And so what it was also part of was uh, kind of like a pros and cons analysis from the de uh, fire department on whether it would be beneficial for the municipality from their perspective to be uh, to maintain volunteer independent status or become a municipal department at some point and what that might look like. So I think it would be beneficial for us to start having discussions about mm -hmm. that. Go ahead. That, that is true how uh, that topic was what, how it originated, I think, at a town meeting almost two years ago. Um, Brad was there, I believe. Um, I think what, what we really looked at was not just staying volunteer or municipality, it's what model. I think, I think it's clear that the model that we currently have is not keeping up with the development of the town. Right. Okay. Berlin is growing immensely, and, and the speed of which the department is, is kind of at a, almost at a standstill. And so it feels. Um, you know, I see Berlin as being like a little Williston. It's growing in, in various places, and all of a sudden you're going to turn around and you're going to have just a lot of development. Right. So I, I don't know. I think it would make sense for the select. There's, there's funding out there, grants. I think it would make sense for us to look at it from a board perspective and say, okay, well, do we, you know, we've never set expect, I mean, probably expectations or what we need for services covered by the fire department. So this is what the town needs. They have never done that, but I know. I don't know if you know Brad, but. Not that I know of. I, mean, I just think it would be a good idea looking forward as we're developing and growing. Um, yeah, I mean, we're a community of less than 3,000 people, Barry cities, close to 10,000 people, um, much, different clientele I think even though we're kind of the center of it all I I just can't see putting the additional burden on landlords a lot of them are doing their best given what they have um, I don't know that an inspection program would necessarily benefit benefit them no. um, I I kind of go back and forth on it you know I um, the, the state does come in if you're building new and they will go into the the new development we have and make sure they have everything but they like Joe said they're they're understaffed I mean they're not ever going to be able to keep up with a regular pace so that being said if they can't hire the staff neither will we be able to that makes sense what about the uh, from a, a direct a direction standpoint or a, how we feel about the fire department and the services they're providing you know, does anybody think it would be valuable to have a conversation around that and look at a five-year ten-year yeah I mean idea. certainly always good because to understand like, where they think they want to go where we think that you know they should be going yeah. where the other departments in the local communities are going or where they have gone the municipal fire service overall has been fairly stagnant um, and that's not you know meant to be negative it's just you know the way the fire department budgets have been and the cost of equipment they haven't had a lot of room for growth or opportunity um, the training hours are you know five times or more what they used to be as far as you know being a certified firefighter one um, enrollments down as far as membership I'd be interested to hear where they'd like to go and how they're going to recruit how is your enrollment right now, Joe, at the current time? We probably get we probably get three three new members come on mm -hmm. and probably losing two within that year. Mm -hmm. So minimum. Mm -hmm. Thank you. How many members do you have total at this point? Eighteen. Do you require them to go through the firefighter one? At this point, no. Do we have we just had three that went through the firefighter one. Yep. Um, just for the record, about 230 some odd hours. Mm -hmm. right. So like Barry City and Montpelier, in order to go into a burning building, you have to be firefighter one, right? Like right. that's the requirement, but we don't require that. We require fire one for uh, interior. Interior. If we did, you know, back inspections of houses or buildings um, 
What does Montpelier charge for that service? It's very definitely. I think it's very and, and uh, roughly fifty dollars a unit a year, with an inspection, I believe, every other year, something like that. Yeah, I think I think I pay seventy five a unit, Barry, but it's every other year for an inspection. Oh, well, I was just thinking that if the fire department can, uh, is there any training for that? Sure. We've had so, people that have, have taken 40 some odd hours of that training. There, there's more to go as well. But well I just wanted to be a revenue stream. It is, and I think that it, I, I, there are, you know, I, after incidents in Barry City, <coughs> like the fires, and, and they make some changes, you know, they'll, they'll say, okay, well, you know, they want to change where the location may be of smoke detectors and put them in bedrooms. And I mean, I, I've never perceived it as a negative as a landlord. Um, I think it's a positive. I, um, I certainly wouldn't want to put a burden on anybody. I don't, I don't think that $75 is a real burden for each unit. I don't know that it's the perfect answer, but I definitely think it's, it's absolutely worth exploring because that's one of the, one of the pieces that may allow us to uh, kind of build up the fire department, get that to a point that, mm -hmm. that, that can maintain with the town that we may need. Yeah, I'm just thinking about the logistics of it. Beyond smoke detectors, yes, you have them. What if you're blocking an exit, you know, with a baby crib, or what, if, you know, like, what happens if you don't follow the recommendations to a T? Do you get fined? Mm -hmm. The tenant or the landlord? landlord? Landlord. Right. So in a situation so, like that, I mean, obviously yeah, with a crib, right. you wouldn't, that's well, not fixed, but. Yeah, I'm just saying, I, I don't think it's a business that we should get into, but. I think it, to answer your question, is it landlord or tenant, I think it works both ways. You know, where you have a, a tenant that may not be, um, you know, the perfect tenant, the landlord um, is assured that at that time, in a way, that it's being checked and that it's, you know, meeting standards. At the same time, you have tenants that have landlords that aren't doing what they should be doing as well. Um, I think it works both ways. So I don't necessarily agree or disagree with whether or not it's the business that the town wants to get into, mm -hmm. um, but I think it's definitely worth exploring, as you know, Brad mentioned, or I can see it as a, a revenue stream. Um, I can see yeah. it. I can it's not, a revenue stream, but it's, all, it's a tax. It's a tax, absolutely. On, on people that have a permit. Absolutely, I agree. And I'm also, but it's also a, a way to help fund some of the, like our, our departments, help what it the does? services we need. It could. That's or, why we're having. It, it, that's yeah. exactly why we're having this discussion. Right. right no. Now. Exactly. And, that, and I'm just thinking, like, we're going to end up paying for someone for them to go in and do the inspection eventually, right? So is it going to be the? Are we actually going to make money, or is it just going to be the pay to have the inspection done? That's all the topics we're right. discussing the process. But right. you're that's, spot on. That's why. Absolutely. Yeah. I wouldn't just say no right away, but I would say right. from now, unless we have more information, we should. It's worth talking about. Mm -hmm. um, Is there anybody from the Planning Commission on here? Yeah, Carla is. Carla? Carla is with us. Can't see her. Carla, are you here? She's muted. I am here. There you go. Sorry, I joined late. I didn't think you were talking about this till 8 o'clock. Well, we, we're, we're chugging right along, so we're on it. Um, have you? Have yeah, you, I th for some reason, I thought the public hearing previously had to last for an hour because it was scheduled for so long. Anyway, here I am. Okay. I didn't hear the conversation. I'm not sure what, if you're looking for uh, Just, building codes for. Um, uh, 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 <laughs> yeah. So, you know, from the Planning Commission standpoint, have you ever looked at adopting any building codes or any inspection process for, for like, say, residential units or anything like that? No, and I did a little bit of looking into it, and from what I understand, very few towns in Vermont have building codes because it's too expensive to uh, enforce and administer. Okay. So. I think I think the size of the town is. I think it's a little. I I would personally, without doing it again, without hearing what was said and without doing a ton of research, think that the size of the town kind of does not support this this type of activity, but. Okay. That's that's my personal opinion. All right. I mean, we have a lot of other things that we, I guess I would say that we have a lot of other things that um, 
would be more of a priority, I would think, for the town. But um, again, that's that's my personal opinion. The Planning Commission can certainly look into it and discuss it with the select board if that's something that um, you're interested in. I'm happy to you know, take that up with the Planning Commission and we can move forward and sort of do a little bit of um, exploring, maybe reach out to the Vermont League of Cities and Towns and talk with them about it in terms of um, towns that have or don't have it, et cetera. Okay. Well, I know, I know the David brought this up. Uh, I've talked a little bit about it with Joe, just the process that I do with, with the, the properties that I own. Um, and I wanted to have a conversation about it at least and just see what yeah. the planning commission's thought was on it, uh, what involvement the fire department would have, what their thoughts would be on it. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, sounds like we Yeah, no, I think that's good, but you're talking beyond just fire, um, fire, right? You're talking building codes, generally speaking? Well, I think that was Dave's intention uh, when he put it on the agenda, so I can't speak to that for sure, but I, I was just more concerned personally yeah. with the fire. That was my concern. Yeah, no, I just, I'm asking for clarification because I wasn't sure. Yeah, well, Dave, I guess probably for right now we'll move along because Dave's not here to discuss his point that he wanted to bring up. Yeah, I think... Well, when I talked to Dave a little bit about it, it was a little further reaching, I thought, than just smoke detectors, right? Yeah, it was like it was, structural building yeah. codes, which would be well, extremely even, difficult, you know. You know. Handrails yeah, and staircases. Yeah, I, I think that's like that. beyond our capability at this point. Uh, yep, yeah, I, I would agree with that. Um, Joe, do you have anything else? I would just say plan for the future. I, yeah, I think it's something to talk about for, for the future, but I think you know that might be a ways down the road. Maybe the Planning Commission could just have a talk with the Fire Department about what their needs are and what they feel it should be, and then see if it's feasible when they, we can have a discussion. As a select board about it. Does that sure, make sense? Not, yeah, absolutely. So maybe invite them into one of your meetings, and we'll go from there? Yeah, that sounds good. <coughs> Thank you, Carla. You're welcome. Justin, it's Keith and Otterstein. Can I add one little tidbit? Absolutely. So in speaking with the just the fire inspections portion, um, we had conversations with Joe Aldsworth down in Barry City about their implementation of the fire inspection is because as you know, they've, they've, um, assume portions of it from the state of Vermont and the end result that they saw was less of a revenue stream and more of a increased fire safety and reduced the fire call load to the fire department itself that was the benefit that they saw from it department charged Barry town for use of the over there um, and then they came back to us and said well it's over a three percent increase uh, I'll let Vince talk about it but they're they essentially robbed our assumption that since they had the contract six months prior and knowing before our renewal mm -hmm. what their rates were going to go up to um, that it wasn't a three percent increase of the contracts, the one that the town signed and the one that is out there for signature between the fire department and the EMS as well. Right. And so we signed this on January 20th. When did you give this to Barrytown EMS? October 6th. It was in October. 
So I think it was, a, and, and I knew at that point that Joe, when I was uh, the rep for the select board to the fire department, I did know that he had provided that with him. I couldn't remember the exact date. Um, but prior to the uh, RFP coming in, they had already known they were going to have a rate increase. So I, I, I feel like we had assumed that that was in their new rate quote or the new RFP and their new pricing. Um, and that it would be a 3% increase over the current rent of the 1550 that they knew it was going to renew at. Um, what was Rob's opinion on that? That's Rob's response. Did I, I was the only one who got it? Yep. I, right. I sent that out. So he says this. Vince, it's my understanding that Barrytown EMS received notice of a 15% increase back in October 2020. I further understood, understand that the proposed Barrytown EMS service contract was submitted to the town for consideration after that date and that the representative for Barrytown EMS signed it, the agreement on February 3rd, 2021. Based on this timeline, I further presume that Barrytown EMS had notice of the increase in the rental rate from the fire department well in advance of submitting the service contract to the town for review and approval. Regarding their request to increase the per capita rates in the service uh, contract, Barrytown EMS apparently relies on provisions that allow for such increases in the event of extraordinary unforeseeable circumstances. Uh, in such circumstances uh, is an increase in Berlin Volunteer Fire Department rates by more than, if, oh, more than 15 percent. I thought it was 3 percent in there. but uh, However, under the timeline set forth above the October 20th, 20 increase cannot be said to be uh, either extraordinary or unforeseen as the increase was known at the time to Barrytown EMS prior to its submittal of the proposed service to the contract for the town. Under such circumstances, Barrytown EMS cannot rely on this provision as a rational uh, uh, rationale to increase their rate. My understanding of the timeline of events here is correct or there are other circumstances at play that have not been brought to the town's attention we may need to revisit the issue. Otherwise, the town should resist any requested increase in rates for any reasons articulated by Barry County EMS. So I just, I know we had had a discussion about that. So I guess we really just needed to see where the board stood. Have you had further discussions with Rob regarding this, Vince? No, I just that's the just last that. correspondence I've had with him on that. And Chris only said he'd be here in about four minutes. Okay. I mean, my position hasn't changed on it. Yeah. They signed the contract. I mean, this pretty well lays out the timeline. All right. That was my opinion. Mm -hmm. and that's why I, I had asked Vince to ask Rob and see, right. you know, where it stood from his perspective. Mm -hmm. um, he feels the same, obviously. There, there isn't really an opinion change, is there? So, do we just want to move on, or do we want to wait for Chris to get in here and explain it to him? I think it's beneficial to hear Chris and what he wants to discuss. You said he's almost ready to come on board? He'd be here. He'd be pulling in in four minutes. I, do the what, I was going to say, we don't have a lot left. Usually there's a public uh, comment at the end of a, a meeting, too. Um, we could give him that opportunity to talk to us. Yep. It's not on here, but I think it right. was just it's missed well, in here. Usually included we, can always come, we can always come back to it, but yeah. I would move on with yep. the licenses and permits. Well, so we have also, we had to add the Fisher Road uh, scoping survey. Sure. Um, which we added at the beginning of the meeting. So, Vince, can you explain that? Fisher Road? Yes. yes. So, you should have a notice of award in there as well. That is just looking for the, uh, I'm looking for the authorization to sign it since I'm designated person on that uh, from the board and then basically the, the the breakdown on the cost of Fisher Road um, that came up right our, our loan amount first we were approved by the voters for 1.4 million and you should have a page in there with this information on it as well with my notes on it um, the loan amount that we have is uh, 1,063,200 
right? So the total cost of the project is one million three ninety nine four one two, which means the town has a has to fill the uh, three hundred thirty six two hundred twelve dollar gap. Um, Diane has, has worked on uh, on those funds and she has reserves of totaling roughly four hundred ninety six thousand. And ninety-seven dollars to cover that amount from the reserves and the structure fund, which would include FY twenty-two. Correct. Reserves. Le leaving a balance reserves, in the twenty-two structure. structure fund of one hundred and fifty-nine thousand eight hundred and eighty-five. Again, that's in the. We have those numbers. I know what you're. So is that a special fund for highways? That we have a reserve. reserve that was, I think it's like in there, like for 96,000. Yep. Then we were planning on carrying over 150,000 from FY21 to FY22. And the balance would be what we have um, budgeted in FY22 for structures in highway. How much were we initially in tenants to, to, was it 336,000? No, 265,000 was going to be our, I think it was 265,800. Mm -hmm. was going to be what we were going to be putting in, but the cost have gone over that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we're still under the 1.4 that the board is approved. Well, this is right. without any project contingencies, right? Right. Right. That's concerning. At the limit, there's... But well, the 1.4 is borrowing. If we can borrow, we're not going to borrow, we're going to borrow with the mm -hmm. Okay, and if so, under the project contingencies, if there if there's a problem and we need to borrow more, can we? Or once not we from not that from that particular area, I'm not sure what we could do, but we we might be able to get like a, a loan through a bank, but I'm not exactly certain on that. Mm -hmm. well, there be some contingencies. There always is. Always. So I think we should probably find out from Rob Helper if we can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, if you take 10%, you're, you're at your 159,000, pretty close to it. Right. We have left in structures. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I suggest not spending any of that for a while. Well, that's it. That's right on there. Yeah. So this probably wasn't that. No. No. So we need a motion to allow them to sign this. Yeah. Notice of a warrant to do voice. That's the whole better. 83900. I make a motion to uh, have Vince Conti sign the notice of award to Dubois Construction in the amount of $839,900. I second that motion. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Scoping um, initially, mm -hmm. but the next the last we moved on to the yeah, the scope yeah. And we also needed a motion for him to be going to say something, but I thought you were going to yell at me. I probably will. Yeah, I'll bring the scoping. I'll bring the scoping up in the round table. But we have to make a motion to authorize you to sign it. So that's what I was looking for a motion on. You said. Please follow me along. <laughs> Make a motion. Yeah, uh, I make a motion to authorize Vince Conti to sign the um, project commitment form, the scoping uh, of Fisher Road. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 All right. Well, uh, approval of license permits, vouchers, and uh, applications. I make the motion to approve the licenses, permits, vouchers, and in payroll warrant 22 03 from payroll from July 18th, 2021 to July 31st, 2021, paid on August 4th, 2021, in the amount of $51,071.07, 
and payable warrant 22 G02 with checks 21317 to 21345 in the amount of $81,493.75. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 All right. Motion carries. Um, we did review the uh, Albert contract already. Mm -hmm. Thanks, mm -hmm. John. Mm -hmm. Trying to be efficient. I see that. Mm -hmm. uh, round table. So, Chris, we, we, uh, we had a quick board discussion for the here. Let me scooch forward because I can't. That man behind me. Yep. Um, so I guess we wanted to take a moment and have a roundtable discussion with you um, and hear what you had to say about the increase on the uh, to play your position. We'll go from there. Hi. Um, so uh, we've been at the Berlin Fire Station for more than my time here. Um, the rate increases every cycle as it goes. Um, this past cycle previous cycle they talked about increasing this increase last year um, they did it about halfway through our fiscal year so talking to the chief and the president um, they agreed to hold it off for a year because we had already budgeted for the year so they put it in for this year so that's why we're talking about now versus earlier um, the increases historically have been about two per two to two and a half percent um, so that's what we budgeted for and that so then I get the contract from them this year with that rate increase, which they talked about last year. Um, so I see the full numbers. I put it in um, with our budget. I talk to the town manager and the select board, and they bring up the provision of the the Berlin Town EMS contract. Just for make sure I can I get the Berlin and Berlin. The Berlin Town contract has the provision where if there's um, large increases in something or decreases in revenues, there's a, an avenue to, to talk about the per capita rate. Um, I talked to the interim um, town administrator here. Um, we tried to get it done before, so there wouldn't be this kind of hangover on, on Vince. Is uh, you Vince? I am. I'm oh, Chris. Nice We've talked two times, I haven't seen him. Um, I tried to get it done before he got here, but I wasn't able to just with everything going on. Um, and we kind of talked and said, you know, rather than just say, you know, here's what we expect to pay every year, and we, we increase it, but we budget every year, we're just going to throw the whole thing on Berlin. We, uh, who was the, the, in the intern? Tom. 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 So Tom and I talked, and, and Tom mentioned this idea, well, what about splitting it 50-50? And I thought that was a pretty fair arrangement, so I did the math out, um, talked to Tom, and wasn't able to get it in writing and get it all the way down through until he left and then didn't start it. That's what got us to here. Um, yeah, that's kind of how we ended up in this 50-50 split. It doesn't necessarily look like a 50-50 split perfectly because every year I based it on what we would expect. So this year is 50-50 based on what we budgeted and what the extra cost would be. Next year is we pay 2% more and then split the 50-50 and then the third year. So that's why you, you'll notice the price I gave you kind of went down each year. And that, that's the reasoning for that. Um, I think that's kind of the ballpark that we got here. So I think the board's perspective on that was slightly different. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we the way we perceived it, knowing that you had new, the new renewal rate prior to um, the new contract that we just signed mm -hmm. was that the, uh, the, the renewal rate, uh, the, the whatever percentage increase that would trigger in your contract mm -hmm. um, was, was based on being in the middle of the contract. You know? So if in the middle of one of our contracts uh, mm -hmm. they decided to increase over that, it would trigger that so that you guys could do it. Our perception was that when we received that uh, RFP from you for the mm -hmm. services that had that you already knew that that's what your rates were going to go up to. Um, so we, we we figured that was what was factored in there. Um, we I mean that's the board's perception. So we did 
I don't, I don't think we want to split it. Just, Justin, were you aware of any conversation between Tom and anyone on the? There were some emails calls? that went back and forth, okay. um, but there was never any real in-depth discussion on it. Um, but I don't remember. It, it was after. I don't remember the time frame. Yeah. I don't think it was prior. I don't recall. What do you remember the time frame of those emails? Um, it was. It was. It was I'd have after. To look, I'd have to look was, at when when that would take place. Yeah. Was, I believe it was after we had signed the contract with you for the, yep. the, the new one. Yep. Um, and I do know that one of the things that Joe had worked on was making sure that the uh, rental agreement with Barrytown EMS uh, went coincided with the town contract now because it was off a little bit. Um, yep. So I, I, I thought everybody was on the same page, and I apologize for any misunderstanding. Yeah, and I can bring it back to, to the, the town board, but one of the things I think they'll notice is that in the, in the previous borrowing contract, the same language was there. The same language is in our previous EMS one with you and, and the, the post EMS one, so I'm right, not sure not, how that. We're not debating that. Mm -hmm. What we're saying is the way that the timeline went out, that you knew your lease was, yeah, was going to go up to $1,550 a month. So we were under the uh, impression that that was built into the new RFP because we were already known. Gotcha. Um, and so therefore, with speaking to our town council, uh, it was also their perception that given that timeline that that would be a reasonable understanding and due to the contract that we, we shouldn't have to split it. <laughs> um, and, and my, just outside my personal opinion, which I probably shouldn't state necessarily, is I think that the, it's $1,550 for the uh, space that you have available in Burlington Corners. That's a really good price. Um, I think it's fair. I, I think it's debatable. I mean, one of the issues to recognize is that while that space is large, the space we have that's ours is two nine by ten bedrooms, and the rest is shared. Mm -hmm. um, so we don't have any space for, you know, while it's a large building, and, you know, office space to do with the paperwork that you have to deal with, the storage for supplies, things like that. You know? So you're right, it is a very large building that gets kind of perusing, but the space that's that's ours to use is yeah. pretty. Yeah. Yeah. I understand the space that you have available I was on the board prior to this year. Um, Joe, do you have anything you want to add or say? or? No, except that, you know, I mean, we're talking about space and shared space, um, I'm going to say probably 90% of the time that shared space is um, very county and that's yeah. use, utilizes that. Joe, you know, Joe yeah. remind me what our utility cost is in that building for a year. The average for the last four years is just over $4,000. Yep. Yeah. Just the utility cost. That, that's also including trash and plumbing. Yep. Okay. Which is included in the Barrytown EMS lease agreement. How do you uh, determine your per per capita rate, and is it the same no matter what town you're you're serving, or is it is it different depending on the town? Um, that I mean, the, I can give you very cursory ideas of that. In reality, I I manage the contracts we have, so that I mean, the town manager would have an answer for that um, much better than I would. I can't answer the parts I can answer is that it is different for every town. Um, Berlin's um, per capita rate is uh, the lowest of the group that we have. Uh, then the next one above uh, high, uh, sorry, the next reduced rate would be um, all of our other contract towns. All of those towns have the same rate. And then the town of Berlin, actually, the town of Barry pays uh, more than, and I, I can't say off the top, yeah. top of my head, I wouldn't use any words to define the differences, but that's right. kind of the case. Yeah. You don't know the formula, though, is it? It's not proximity to hospital or anything like that? No, I don't, I don't know how they calculate that. That's between the town manager and the select board when they present it to the towns. And so when you're also calculating, like, your revenue, which you said if revenues decrease, that's, mm -hmm. that's one of the things. Um, are you using non-emergency transfers? In okay. Yeah, our revenue is based on 901 emergency transfers. I'm oh, sorry, let's say 901 uh, non-emergency transfers, 
and then any third party things we get, um, which could fall there, be paramedic intercepts. Um, you know, nowadays, the, any kind of COVID money that comes in, whether it's grant money that was given out to EMS agencies and, and or um, some of their vaccine and, and uh, testing clinics we've been doing, that's all calculated in those revenues. So are they, I noticed you're doing a vaccine clinic over there. Have you talked to the fire department about it? Did they try to do anything extra to utilize that extra space in the traffic through there? How did that all come They up? did not. So the, the current one, and, and I'll publicly apologize to the fire department that um, we did a clinic at, their, at the fire department uh, on Thursday-ish last week, the exact day last week. And then we went scheduled tomorrow. And we, we started doing our own vaccine clinics in the last four to six weeks. Prior to that, we were just assisting the state at their big clinics. Um, and so in that, we were finally given our own vaccine and about a week and basically two to two and a half weeks ago, um, we had a transition and my person who leads it left for medical school. So when we everything transitioned to me, I kind of looked at some of the information and realized we had 95 doses that were going to be thrown away as of the 7th of this week or 7th of this month. So that's Saturday, I think. And so I talked to the state and said, are we allowed to just do our own clinics to try to get rid of these rather than, I'd rather throw away four doses and give one um, than have to throw away five. And last minute came up with this idea of like, well, well, great. They said we can do them, and the person I, that I asked to do it mentioned the idea. Well, could we do one here and one in Berlin? And with all this happening the last two weeks, I I missed this. And completely, me did not reach out to them and ask for use of that space. Um, it just I have no excuse for it. And I have already talked to them and apologized for it. Okay. At this point, we're done after tomorrow because. We don't have any vaccines, and moving forward, if we did, then we fix that. Um, do you have any other questions? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Hey, thank you for coming again. No problem. Thank you, Chris. Right. Chris enjoy. Appreciate you. Have a good night. You're welcome. Um, Do you have anything for roundtable? Seems like you have a lot to say tonight. I do. No, I don't have anything for a round. Well, yes, I do have something about roundtable. Um, I'm a little, I'm a little concerned. Um, when when me and my family first moved to Berlin, we would see the police department daily through our neighborhood. Um, we get about 300 walkers a week, more when it's nice out, and. We just don't see them at all anymore. Um, you know, my sister's car was brushed. You know, someone hit my chickens. Like, we don't even let the kids ride their bikes in the road anymore because the speed is just crazy through there. I've asked a couple times to have the police department start patrolling, and they're nowhere to be found. Chief, chief is on. Well, you'd like to respond. I, I, yeah, I would be interested because we're not at the. We're not at the hotel anymore, right? Well, I'll, I'll let the chief answer that. I think he, he still pays it some oh. visits occasionally. Can chief, would you like to speak that? to that? Yeah. yeah. There. There is. Um, we had several calls for service regarding traffic enforcement, which we try to um, address whenever we can. We're still at an extremely high call volume, our arrests are on par or just uh, following behind Barry City. So given a police department that's half the size of Barry City and we're trailing Barry City in arrest, kind of shows us the level of I, yeah. intensity that. I hear you, Chief. I guess my concern comes from when I and see Facebook posts about Work. All the people we pull over for doing 15 miles an hour over on the Barry Belt Line, but we have 300 walkers walking across Berlin Pond on hills with blind corners and no patrol. I think you know if you the average speed on on Berlin, on Berlin Pond on that circle is is compared is comparatively higher, I think, than 
the 15 miles an hour hour that you guys are pulling people over for on Barry Beltway where there's I would say you know less risk to pedestrians it's just concerning knowing the number of people that are there we're lowering the speed limit we're trying to do our part but if we're not actively patrolling it you know people are going to continue to do to do the same speed I understand you guys have a lot of calls and you know I certainly wouldn't want their job I think they do a great job all I'm asking for is that you know this is a high, high traffic area that's not getting any service right now and I'd really like them to start patrolling again is that I didn't hear is that part of a normal routine it like, used to be but is it now I mean is it part of a or is it just that you're stretch? you feel like you're stretched so thin you can't get out there it during the daytime it would depend um, like for today for example we had officers following up on a bunch of nonsense that happened this weekend so I myself have gone out there and have not observed a whole lot of traffic it's difficult for me to justify expending officers time there when there's other stuff that needs to be addressed as well so the, the only thing that I can suggest is that we start to monitor traffic to see if there's any patterns there. And we can do that by putting our speed enforcement card out there or speed enforcement sign out there. So we can track when the speeding is occurring and how frequently, how frequently it's occurring so that we can better utilize officers time in addressing when, yeah, when no, it should be up. I think that would be great. I think earlier, Vince mentioned something about 350 approximately yeah. cars go, go across Brookfield Road every day. day. 310 per day. Average. Um, it's, a, it's a fair number of cars when you consider the number of walkers. And if you walk around the loop, I guarantee you more than once you'll jump to the side hoping you don't get hit. <laughs> Not just from speeders, but just from the blind corners themselves. So I, I think the select board's trying to do their part by lowering the speed limit, but a little bit of enforcement will certainly make people recognize that they need to slow down. I'm not asking for all the time, I'm just asking for a little bit more. So, does it make sense then that we try to put a speed cart or speed sign out there to that, that monitor would be, what we... Yeah, that would be a great need. first step. I think that would be ideal. Mm -hmm. oh. mm -hmm. Anything else? Thank you, Chief. That was it for me. Thank, thank you. you. Brad, anything? No. Flo? Yeah, thank you. All right. Uh, we make a motion on an executive, uh, executive session. Uh, well, before you do that, what's the state's policy going to be on uh, closing or stopping the uh, voucher system for the motel? I don't know yet. I think, uh, <clears throat> I think there's so much left to be determined. I think there's a lot of information that comes out um in october that i'm i'm really anxious to hear more of what where we're headed with stuff um i think there's a big amount of covid money that is going to be uh distrib distributed and, and stuff like that i i know uh i i posted it and i think i talked to vince at uh at the amtrak uh, gathering, I think there's a uh, million dollars in the next couple of years is going to be with Northfield and Berlin, and I think that's divided up per capita. Um, and where Northfield uh, will we'll get more is, is is because of the university. That part here will help us with that. Um, but it seems like with this um, with this American uh, Rescue Plan Act, that offer thing there, it looks like that could be ongoing. And and sure, some money may not be able to get uh, be able to be used for a certain thing that you're trying to do, like some of these bridges and stuff like that, or culverts, whatever you want to say. Like I know I get um, a tremendous amount of, of, of input calls on uh, on Lovers Lane Bridge in in uh, West Berlin or Riverton, whatever you want to say. I mean. I feel like I'm on the Berlin select board. I mean, I was on the on the Northfield select board for 10 years, and it's like, oh my, you know, I'm right yeah. back into this. Which, which, by the way, this is fun to hear again too. I mean, I do miss it. But uh, yes, Mr. Uh, do you know off the top of your head about what percentage of the ARPA funds the legislature's expended? 
or appropriated. I, I just I haven't been on top of it that much yet, John. It's a I, I know it's a different committee, so you got you have your own stuff in judiciary. I just I couldn't remember the, off the top of my head, so I wasn't sure if you knew. If I come back for a third term, I'd like to be on those money committees. I'm, I'm uh, <laughs> nothing against lawyers or any of that stuff there, but no offense, I uh, <laughs> I uh, I've happened to tell with this guy before too in Northfield, but. Um, um, okay. I, I enjoy working with the money committees a lot more. So, but anyway, I appreciate. Uh, I miss this stuff. This is this is good. This is gets right back to the community. What's going on with everything you guys do, or all of you do, and it's uh, it's it's great to see. You and uh, really appreciate what what you all do. I think to read. I think to read between the lines there. He's saying these are the boards that get stuff done. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding, Representative. Go sign. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you. I'll, uh, uh, I would like to spend some more time around uh, Berlin, and now that COVID is hopefully taking a break and maybe disappearing, uh, get out about more. It's good to see people moving again. Thank, Thank you. you for Thank being you. here. Thank you. Appreciate, Appreciate you. Your time. See ya. Um, You're going to executive session, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Out of here. Right. Entertain a motion and executive session. So moved. Second. 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 I can call them about one or two little bit sometime, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, any discussion? Is that up the priority list? Those yeah. in favor say aye. 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 aye.